Hello there, Josh Stevens here, Head Geek at SolarWinds. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Syslog. Now if you're not familiar with Syslog, devices like routers, switches, firewalls, and servers store events or log messages locally within the device. And so if you wanted to instead consolidate these event messages or these logs into a central log system, the way to do that is with Syslog. And there's an RFC called RFC 3164 that specifies how syslog messages will work and be formatted. So if you want to learn more about that, I would suggest you go research that RFC 3164 and read a little more. But when I'm talking about you know, syslog server in terms of the way you use it today, you need the devices to be configured to send you the syslog messages, and you need a syslog application to then receive and consolidate the messages, display them for you, and send alerts based upon their content. And the Kiwi syslog server from SolarWinds does a great job of this. Let me go ahead and show you now. Now what I have in front of me is the Kiwi Syslog Server web access component. This allows me to use a web browser from anywhere in my company to access the Syslog Server messages that are coming in to my Kiwi Syslog. I can also go ahead and scroll through and see older messages. I can go see and configure the filters, which I'll go into in a moment. I can even configure how the messages will be highlighted and go and change settings right here from the website. The website makes it very, very easy to access and see the syslog messages that are coming in in sort of real time as they're occurring. And remember, I can do this from anywhere on the network as long as I have web access to the Kiwi syslog server. Now, what I'm going to pull up now is the, the, the Windows user interface to the Kiwi syslog server. Very similar to the web interface in that you can see different views and have the messages sorted based upon priority or have them highlighted so you can see the most important messages easier. There's some pretty cool settings that I want to walk you through. One of the first things you would do when you'd install a syslog server is go in and set up the filters. And the filters are used to determine what will happen when a message is received. Now you might set up a filter to do things like uh, limit the, the message action based upon priority of the message. You might want to filter based upon IP address range, uh, host name, time of day. This is really just a simple way of specifying uh, how you'll go about reacting to the messages as they come in. Now once you've done that, you'll want to go in and then build actions. Now actions are about what the syslog server will do when a filter has been met. So for instance, if you wanted to say build a new filter to limit uh, the, the incoming messages from a specific host IP address, and then based upon the messages from that IP address or with certain content, either display them on the website, uh, maybe you want to log them to a file, or maybe you want to log to a database. Now, these are some important differences that you'll want to understand that the licensed version of the Kiwi Syslog server allows you to do. Things like logging to an ODBC database, and also you can do things like forward the messages to another Syslog server. Now a lot of our users out there that have large enterprises will deploy the Kiwi Syslog server strategically within the subnets where their servers and network devices are, and then have the Kiwi Syslog server start to consolidate and store these messages and alert on them. Then if the messages are enterprise management oriented, they'll have it forward the Syslog message up to the Orion Syslog server so that it's consolidated within the NMS. And one of the cool things you can do within this application when you're forwarding the syslog messages is you can actually go ahead and tell it to use the original device's IP address when it forwards that message. So that it looks like it came from the router or switch that sourced the syslog message instead of from the syslog forwarder itself. There's a ton of cool stuff you can do within the application. You can also go in and have it receive traps. Now SNMP traps are sort of similar to syslog in that they're used as real-time notifications, sort of event-based messaging to tell you when you have a problem on the network. They're a little bit different though in the format of the message. What you want to remember is the Kiwi syslog server does both syslog message reception and alerting and alerting and reception for SNMP traps. Some other things to think about when it comes to managing uh, event messages or log messages on devices are that Windows servers don't natively support protocols like syslog. So if you're managing a lot of Windows servers and you want to consolidate your log messages, you need to think about how you're going to do that. Now for customers that own the Kiwi syslog server or the Orion network performance monitor with the syslog server included, you can get for free from SolarWinds.com the SolarWinds log forwarder. This application installs on all of your Windows servers and runs in the background. And as it watches events coming in, it will then forward those events as syslog messages to the Orion server or the Kiwi syslog server. It makes it very, very easy to use these applications to consolidate, store, and alert upon event messages from the Windows applications. All you do is click Add, select the types of event logs that you want, and in the matching criteria you want to use. 
Once you've done that, you simply click Next. Tell it which types of messages you want to escalate or consolidate. And once you've done that, excuse me, you just simply click Finish and you're done. And now you configured a job on this system to automatically forward Windows events as syslog messages into your Kiwi syslog server or within Orion. Last but not least, you may have a need to use the Log Viewer. Now, the Log Viewer is a pretty cool application. Let me explain to you why. You know, one of the things you can have it do is to break up your log messages as they're received so that when the, the files that these messages are stored in start to get too large, it will break it up into separate files. You know, things like syslog and SMP traps can come in uh, at the rate of several thousand messages per second in some cases. So the files or databases that store these can become very large. Now, managing large text files can be cumbersome, and there aren't a lot of good text editors out there that allow you to open really large files like the ones that would store a lot of syslog messages for the Kiwi syslog server. So what I want to do now is open the Kiwi Log Viewer and actually open a file of where I've stored syslog messages. Now that I've done that, I can then search through their messages and start to evaluate the content and you know research what sort of problems I had during that time frame. So the Kiwi Log Viewer is a great application to use uh, in conjunction with the Kiwi syslog server. So again, it's Josh Stevens here, head geek at SolarWinds. Today we've covered some details about how syslog server works and what a syslog server is. And specifically, we wanted to highlight the differences between uh, doing local log management and why you want to use a strong log server and log management server like the Kiwi syslog server. Thanks a lot and have a great day.